here's the thing, man. Am I completely out on Sod? No, not at all. Uh, I mean, you guys know it. I've said it. I've said it a lot. The big thing I'm looking forward to, the big thing I've been waiting for, is max level, like level 60, maybe level 50. There's a chance that I come back and put it back in the rotation. I mean, there's been a, obviously a lot of like GTA that we've been doing. I think over the course of the next couple of weeks, I would expect to have some other things going on. Like I'm gonna be hosting this uh, Plunderstorm tournament in LA. So I'm gonna be flying out in a couple days and doing that, and uh, we'll go from there. So this I'm is the Claystone, season. This is the uh, Sod Phase Three preview. It's gonna be happening April fourth. I don't know what my plans are. I've talked about it before. Like I've always said, like I want to play Sod more at higher levels because for me, I just like playing WoW at like max level mostly. I'll probably play more at like level sixty, but this is gonna be level fifty, and uh, we are gonna check it out. So this video is kind of long. I Let's get to it. I'm Claystone, Associate Production Director of WoW Classic. Welcome to our Season of Discovery Phase 3 preview. As our team has shared in the past, we have been blown away by the reception to Season of Discovery, and we're so excited to share this sneak peek at what's ahead with you. So with that, let's take a look at what we'll be covering today. We'll kick things off with raid information, then a preview of rune abilities, followed by our PvP updates, changes and additions being made ones. to world yeah, events, I didn't, I didn't really a look at what's coming you. to professions, and close it out with a very important system update and more, which you're definitely gonna wanna stick around for. All right, so just like last time, some disclaimers. We're gonna put the build up on PTR soon to check our era and hardcore realms, but like all the other phases, phase three of Season of Discovery will not have a PTR for player testing. Still, there will be some data mining that occurs in advance of the launch. But as we've been saying since the beginning of Season of Discovery, not everything data mined will actually be in the phase or future phases, so speculators beware. And conversely, there's more to discover in this upcoming phase and beyond than we're going to talk about ahead of time. And we want your feedback. Everything we do across Classic continues to be a journey that is co-written by you, the players. And we can't wait to hear your thoughts on all of it. All right, so I'm sure it is a total surprise that absolutely no one saw coming that the Temple of Atal Hakar, AKA the Sunken Temple, will be our new and first 20 player level up raid. This raid is jam packed with Honestly. eight bosses, Tons of Sun, new I items, think Sun and new is a great item choice. sets, new and revamped and, epic and you're drops, literally treating it and like up-leveled and rebalanced quest rewards. This is also when the level 50 class quests Sun, come Sun online, Temple, which will provide a choice. wide array of powerful items for each class. Jumping into a quick preview of a few of the bosses, the first boss in this raid is Atalarion, a massive berserker troll that acts as a bit of a janitor, cleaning up or potentially eating any person or thing that happens to fall down from the atrium above. Oh, including If the fall Guzu. doesn't kill you, this guy definitely will. Next up, we have a brand new boss, the Festering Rot Slime. This engorged gelatinous monster inexorably patrols one of the outer rings of the Sunken Temple, consuming any wandering adventurers hapless enough to cross its path. A bit further into the raid, we have Jamal An and Ogum, a priest and an undead avenger, utterly dedicated to seeing the blood god Hakar return to the mortal world. These two will keep you on your toes and have a few tricks up their sleeve to keep the fight interesting each time you encounter them. The last boss in this preview is the mighty green dragon, Aranicus. Aranicus has been having mm, a bit of a bad dream classic. for the past few decades, and that dream is manifesting in our world in a variety of ways, which Nor will talk about in just a little bit. For those that make it to his lair, we can't recommend waking this big beast up, but if you do and are able to prevail, a lot of sweet loot will no doubt await you. Speaking of loot, here's a quick look at some of the awesome rewards you'll find inside the Sunken Temple. First up, we have a new take on the Drake Stone item with a new Shadow Arcane Spell Damage variant. Next up is a rather unique Arcane weapon. Damage. Yes, it's an axe gun. Shamans huh? and paladins have felt left out for quite some time when it comes to having ranged weapons. <laughs> Squall, and short of Egan's the gun blaster, blade. there's not much for them. Now, you too can have a gun that you can swing like an axe or shoot like a gun. With a cooldown, of course. It's unfortunately a bit slow on the reload. Lastly, we have a quick look at our tier tokens. Similar to AQ40, we'll have two different this tokens cool. with several classes on each. We really like the token the system in Nomergon, but it sometimes felt content, a bit bad to be TV. rolling against the entire raid whenever one dropped. So now we'll have two different tokens and multiple it's will drop cover. on each boss that can drop set tokens. And here's a quick look at some of bad. the epic rewards. First off, we've got a glow up for the classic Embrace of the Serpent robe for healers. Oh, We've wow. also updated the sword Dragon's Call, 
One cool thing about this weapon is that we've added several brand new glow effects Dragon's for weapons Call in this upgraded patch. Dragon's Cry. And this is one of the first items to take advantage of having a very fancy, but still quite classic, new glow. And just like in previous raids, we've got several fun items lined up as well. The first item Glowy. is the Atalai Blood Ceremony, which allows you and a friend or a friend to play a People deadly game where only one survives. This item is great for when you need but to decide like something and a good. coin flip just won't cut it. The unorthodox hex stick allows you to embrace your inner critter and transform into a disgusting Dark little orange. creepy crawler to dazzle and disgust your friends. These are just a few examples and there are several cool things coming with this patch. We've intentionally left the best ones for you to discover yourself. Lastly, one bit of feedback we took to heart this last patch is that mostly. a lot of updated quest rewards for previous level up raids could feel a bit underwhelming. So for Sunken Temple, we've actually gone a step further and helped rebalance and restat many of the existing quest rewards. The first example here is a Vanguard Helm. And you can see we've made it a bit more attractive to the classes that can use it. And Helm of Exile as well. And while not a quest reward, we have also carried forward some of the work we did updating dungeon uh, drops in the previous phase and revamped even more dungeon drop rewards, including Princess Theradress's Scepter. And with that, I'll turn it over to Matt to give us a preview oh, Princess, of runes Princess and just some Mace of the new uh, abilities Feldred. you'll get access to. Hey folks, I'm Matt Everett, Senior Engineer on the Classic Team. I'll go over some of the new runes you might find in Phase 3. Before that, I want to note that we heard your feedback that a lot of runes last phase weren't That's accessible until both level of 40. Okay, dude. We've tried to balance phase three, so you'll find more runes while leveling, but you'll still have some to look forward to at 50. Let's look at druids first. Gore gives you a chance to reset some key feral cooldowns and generate some rage. And improved bark skin dude, gives you hey, all I the come back to Sod, without the drawbacks. Hey, I'm reserving and everything. First item, a, a reptile, hard reptile load, across the board. I'm letting you guys know now. You a free shot right. with no cooldown. This I'm, could be a great I'm one reserve punch, items I can't something use. like double okay. Chimera shot. Focus fire lets your pet build up <laughs> frenzy, which increases its attack speed. You literally type this. You can activate you it to consume this your before frenzy, I said it. <laughs> boosting your attack speed and granting your pet focus. Like I was Next in the middle up are mages. This. Deep freeze is a powerful five-second stun on a frozen target. If the target's immune to stuns, it takes significant damage instead. Balefire bolt lets you live on the edge of risk and reward, dealing heavy damage but decreasing your spirit. If you reach zero spirit, you die. And by the way, if you're leveling a new mage, you might find this rune earlier than you expect. Paladins. Improved Sanctuary makes you even tankier, increasing Sanctuary's damage blocked and damage dealt back to attackers. Dance for a minute. Wrath wow. lets you crit with Consecration and applies your melee crit chance to your Holy Shock, Holy Wrath, and Exorcism spells. Hold up. Consecration can now be crit? Damage from your Exorcism, Holy Shock, and Holy Wrath and Consecration now gains additional critical strike chance equal to the melee critical strike chance. You're always gonna have Vengeance up easy. So the value of crit chance is actually gonna go down more. So you're gonna go, the value of crit and agility is gonna go down versus like the attack power side of things because you're just gonna have vengeance uptime is gonna be way easier. Let's look at priests. Pain and suffering allows your mind flay ability to refresh the duration of shadow word pain while surge of light causes your crits to make your next smite or flash heal instant cast. Rogues. I get Honor Among Thieves is incredibly kind of powerful, already. granting you a combo point each time a party member scores a crit. It does have a short cooldown, but you'll be swimming in combo points with this rune. Cut to the Chase makes it easier to keep Slice and Dice up by allowing Eviscerate and Envenom to refresh it back to its max duration. Next up are Shamans. When you deal melee damage, Mental Dexterity applies your intellect to your attack power, and then applies 30% of your attack power to your spells. My, my thing with Sod Riptide is it's is too much like retail minus. It instantly minus. heals the target for an initial like, amount, so many, and then like, heals for a similar amount over time. I don't know, it's like they're kind when of merging a vanilla and wrath, and I don't know if I, It gets yeah. consumed to power up the chain that's, that's my big thing. Warlocks. Like, I don't feel, I don't really feel like I'm playing like spells, mm, even more overwhelming a type of paladin that I really like. With this rune, you can summon the iconic Fell Guards to supplement your stable of demon pets. The oh, Felguard is a powerful melee damage dealer capable of both uh, tanking and dealing out much. serious punishment. But he's not the only new the demon you can summon this phase, but I'll let go. you discover that on your own. Warriors. With Taste for Blood, your rend damage lets you use overpower once per six seconds. Sword and Board gives your Devastate and Revenge so a chance to reset really. Shield Slam's cooldown and make it cost no rage. This time, Warriors get a bonus rune. 
the much requested gladiator stance. Now, lets you lift that weapons. sword and shield gladiator See, fantasy. That's weird. Like that's this not increases like, your I, damage from wearing a shield, as well as letting you use abilities from other stances at the cost of survivability. This is one we've really been looking forward to bringing to the season, and we can't wait to see what warriors are able to do with it. I love watching players work together to find all the new runes each phase, and I'm looking forward to this one. Wait, yeah, yeah. Gladiator stance is coming back? I love really looking forward to bringing to the season. So, Gladiator stance was a thing whenever, I think it was whenever I wasn't around in WoW, but I always remember hearing about how much people loved Gladiator stance because it was like, uh, it was want, right? So wasn't so glad wasn't the point of gladiator stance? We can't stance? wait to see what warriors are able to do with it. Time. I love watching uh, players work together like to find all the new runes each phase, and I'm looking forward to this one. With Up stance. next, Nora will join like us OP. to talk about PvP updates. It's probably DPS. Hey, thanks, yeah. Matt. My name's Nora Valletta, and I'm a lead software engineer on WoW Classic. I'm here to talk about some of the other updates we've got coming in Phase Three, starting with PvP. One of the things we've learned from previous phases is that PvP can be a bit rough when the only thing available is PvE gear that is generally set up with output stats rather than survivability stats. As a result, we're going to be introducing a brand new level 50 PvP set that requires ranks 5 through 7 to equip and earn. This is similar to the rank 10 and rank 13 PvP sets in that it's a full six piece set with okay. appropriate PvP set bonuses. So there will also be a starter set available from Are they giving you like resilience type wardens, stat or like just more stamina? Because I like that. On. Here's a quick look at I like the more like PvP stamina. Set items. You'll notice that they are a bit more specialized and focused than the previous level 60 oh, PvP sets. Okay. Each class will have a variety of sets available to them such that multiple different I like this specs more. or roles are covered. We're also making a few adjustments to the Blood Moon event, I, including I, I prefer adding that. brand new rewards for level 50. We'll also be adding a new currency for the level 50 rewards called Massacre Coins, which you'll earn when killing higher level players in the event. Like, we'll I prefer having more, more health and stuff for commendations that are currently available from the Blood Coin vendor. Any existing commendations that you have will still function after the patch, but don't hold on to them forever. They will expire after two weeks. We think it's okay if you're able to bank these now to give you a bit of a leg up on PvP ranking at the start of the next phase, but we don't necessarily want you to be able to hoard enough coins to get you all the way up to rank 14 later on when that rank becomes available. We'll have a new PvP honor consumable token for level 50 as well, purchasable with the new currencies. And how about some gear? Here are a few of the new items available via the Blood Moon event in Phase 3. Corrupted Smashbringer! You know Hunter's Barbed Spear is a warrior-only weapon. We also realized that ranged hunters may have felt a bit left out last time, so we've gone ahead and given them a pretty strong crossbow Wait, option. Five, five, that, this has five lifesteal. Your ranged attacks leech five health from your targets. Well, so phase three camera, of sorry. Season of Discovery will soon be upon us, and with it comes new loot, new opportunities to gain experience, and new adventure. Let's take a quick look at our new PvE world event called Nightmare Incursions. Picture, if you will, the four emerald portals scattered across Azeroth. At this point in history, the dragons of Nightmare, Terrar, Yzandra, Emerus, and Lethan have not yet arrived a to spread from the terror. Emerus. However, have as you approach each portal, you can't help but sense hidden danger. Something's not quite right. Those brave enough to enter an emerald portal will be plunged into a realm seeping with corruption and overrun with dragons, treants, and other poor souls driven mad by the corruption. I, I, like, how they're, I like how they're Not utilizing the nightmare alive. dragons. Some enemies can be defeated by a single seasoned adventurer, while others are perhaps too powerful to be faced alone. Nightmare incursions offer repeatable PvE content for levels 25 through 50. Okay. To check it out, simply enter one of the four Emerald min, Portals min level located content, in Duskwood, that's good. Ashen Vale, Hinterlands, or Feralis. This is a great new opportunity to earn experience, and those who choose to jump in and fight the corruption will have the chance to earn reputation with an all-new faction called the Emerald Wardens. With great danger comes great rewards. The Emerald Wardens will be very grateful for your help, and will be offering a selection of choice new items to sweeten the deal. One of the cool things about Nightmare Incursions is that we plan to include some rewards at different player levels as there will be content available for players roughly level 20 all the way to 50 across all four Nightmare Portals. The first example is this Nightmare Siphon Trinket, which could be really fun for low-level alts. For level 50, we have the Roar of the Dream, a somewhat unique ring that has a sizable spell damage proc on it. Lastly, we also plan to take a your what? Your harmful spells have a chance to increase spell damage by... See, this would have been good in vanilla for, for like a paladin. 
Depending on like what proc did, it could have been good for a paladin at that level. But see, I don't know. See, this is actually so interesting because I've taken time off and like the meadows and stuff it's are from different. From the Burning Crusade playbook. Like, like I, I used to go and I used to do like a lot of the, like paladin theory crafting stuff, like from like vanilla and whatnot. But I've kind of been out of it for a minute, so so I'm I'm behind the times now, which is kind of interesting. And make a level fifty PvP. Rep, see, but here's the thing: I know people R. say ret. Everybody's saying ret pally is so good right now, and I should play. The problem is not ret paladin not being good for me. The problem for me is not ret paladin not being good. Is is it fun for me? For me, fun is like classic, like like vanilla burning crusade paladin is super fun for me. I don't like like the super fast attack meta, or like even even like wrath. Like I don't, I didn't really like wrath. Like I don't like, it's just, you know what I mean? Heard with the new like I like Warden's big numbers, seal twisting. This set isn't as powerful as some of the other PVP item rewards. I will say this: Sod phase, phase one was in, getting up and getting all the runes was, was super fun. With the launch of phase three comes a host of interesting new. Yeah, there's there's to never gonna be anything like TVP paladin. Continuing on from man. the first two phases. We'll be introducing a new quest chain to give players access to new nightmare armaments, crafting recipes, as well as some fun things for engineering, enchanting, and alchemy. We've also learned a few lessons from the previous phase of professions, so the cost to access the recipes will be essentially free in terms of raw gold, and the cost of the recipes that Ziri offers and Nomragon are going to be decreased as well. In case you want to buy additional recipes for completion, or you have an alt that wants to snag the recipes for themselves, we think gold sinks are important and are going to explore different ways later on to do that that are not so directly on the critical path of gear progression. Here's a quick look at a few of the crafted items you can make this phase. There are many more across various professions and for various specs and roles. As you can see, some of these items offer interesting new on-equip effects which are applied while you're under the influence of the nightmare. If you'd prefer to stay nightmare free, we've got some cool new items such as the void powered Slayer's Vambraces, which can grant you immunity to fear for 15 seconds. We do plan to allow you to pick up specializations this phase, as well as allow you to level to 300 in each profession. Additionally, we've oh, added a few new surprises sense. here. For example, we are adding a quest to allow you to get additional potion, elixir, and flask procs when crafting those types of consumables. Okay. You'll also have to do a little bit of legwork to unlock these things, but the benefits should be well worth okay, it. I'm gonna log, the I'm lion's gonna log share of our new toys involving professions specs will be coming after level 60, and we have some very cool so, things so how do you guys there think, to allow you to make How do you guys think they approached well, professions in phase updates. two versus, I hope I didn't uh, versus phase one? Am Better, I, worse, the same? One Still good. System update you might have missed. But first, hi, I'm Josh Greenfield, senior game producer on WoW Classic. I like Agrand so a lot. So there's one small system change coming, and honestly, the update is so minor we almost. I didn't really like Agrand because we didn't think anyone would really care. But since we're all previewing things, we figured we I'm might a, as well. I'm a big fan of Agrand. So in 115.2 with Phase Three, you may happen upon a dashing dwarf from a faraway land that has one very special talent that he wants to share with you for a small fee, of course. Actually, to be a little bit more specific, there, so they are going to add dual spec talents to share. Like I said, we were pretty sure this wouldn't be a big deal to most players. We probably should have just left it out of the presentation entirely. So, with that, we're approaching the home stretch, but we've got a tiny bit more to discuss, and we want to take some time to cover a few other miscellaneous topics, commonly asked questions, as well as a quick look at how things will start to shape. I up just don't understand cases. why people so let's like jump right into that. So the first topic here is world buffs. As with the previous phases, we'll continue to allow you to use the previous world What's up, buff Jim and Jordy? How are you, dude? Current max How you, buddy? The new raid, are we back on Temple, wow. will also include... I'm just watching the video raid. today. We'll also be making some rather My powerful plan was to play max level more than ...for exchange on a certain NPC using materials found in the Sunken Temple raid. These are spiritually similar to the Zanza elixirs that you could obtain by exchanging items found in Zolgarub. They're quite powerful, so you'll definitely want to bring them with you to the raid when you can. Also, as with previous phases, we did want to clarify that bankable, repeatable turn-in items will not function to allow you to level quickly from 40 to 50. We really love the preparation aspects of original. Yeah, I was planning on playing more at like 60 than anything, great. but I but might, I might play 50 hundreds here. or even thousands of repeatable quest turn-in items to get multiple. Oh, they're getting rid of the turn-in quest. Okay, is not going to be supported in this or any phase going forward. 
To be clear, cool. this includes things like Marks of Honor, Wastewander water pouches, and the troll necklaces from the Hinterlands. One of the big lessons we've learned in Season of Discovery is how tricky it can be to balance the level up journey I and feel the like they should have just made them one time questions. also questions. encourage players to play multiple characters. It's tricky to manage, especially against a seasonal backdrop where the content phases are relatively short. By I am glad characters. that they got through phase so two fast. Bit, That's fantastic. I was like mad about phase one taking too long. XP buff at the midpoint of phase two. And while that was effective at increasing the speed at which you could level alts, it didn't really help to reduce the fatigue that came with leveling your first main character. By way of a compromise in phase three, you will earn 50% additional XP from all sources from levels 40 to 49, and this will be active right when phase three goes Wait. live. This is just to give a phase slight edge right away. It will still be a sizable number of hours to hit 50, knows. but this will help move that along without feeling Dude, like you're either just flying through zones or conversely in danger of running out of quests if questing is your preferred leveling method. Note that the 100% I mean, dude, I'll just say it, WoW players are so spoiled, man. In place as well. Years years Overall, of like the retail WoW mentality has, has like ruined they are what we WoW player mentality. Ideal. It's so bad. We're going to carry a lot of what we learned forward if we do something Everybody like this feels again, like they have to get every item and complete every piece of content before the, the next patch comes out. Additionally, it's just like it's like embedded into their before, brain because that's what they got Gilmore in retail for like five expansions. Of XP for each boss it's very so bad. To run that with your guild will be a worthwhile activity when it is available to you. On the same token, we see nightmare incursions as a good quick way to get a it's, good. It's chunk literally of XP like it's like poison their brain and it actually hurts the game so much more than they think. There's a lot of the thing is a lot of people are like older now and they're like. As for the raid release and lockout schedule, they don't get what they want. They're we've like, been thinking a lot about this, and we've decided whatever. to like, shift let's, let's Sunken Temple to a weekly lockout, and it will be available right at the release of Phase 3, kind of similar to what we did with Nomergon in Phase 2. Players will have five full days to hit level 50 if you want to try and get in a raid during that first lockout, and then the raid will work like any other weekly lockout, resetting on Tuesday or your normal regional lockout day. We decided to make this swap for a few reasons. First, We've gotten feedback from players saying they would like to have a bit no, more I don't, I don't think it's a streamer thing just raid yet. schedule. And with the raid size going up to 20 players in this phase, because every time I talk about this, people are like, streamers are so out of touch. And I'm like, we'll dude, also dude, talk about this a little understand. bit more in the next few slides, but we're I, also I thinking game for ahead years before to what the raiding landscape will look like once we hit level 60. That also informs this decision. <laughs> Lastly, on this topic, we will be sure we are being generous with drops to compensate for this change. That's a good segue to talk about level 60 in-game. Since we are getting close to 60, we think it makes sense to dig into a few more details of what you can expect starting with phase four. This preview is very, very early and in no way comprehensive, but it's just meant to be a minor right. sneak peek to dig into a few more details. Okay, all okay. right. Now this is four. This preview this is, is very, I'm, very early. I'm, I'm no very like looking forward to level 60 side. a minor side. sneak peek at some things we have. Because I really again, want level 60. Stress that much of what you will see here is still very much in development and some specifics could and likely will change. This is more of a look at our general thought process rather than the actual set in stone plans we have. As we alluded to a few slides ago, we plan to standardize raid lockouts from level 50 and beyond to a weekly reset. This includes things like Zul'Gurub, Ruins of Anchorage, and Onyxia's Lair. We also want to assure with our itemization updates, many of the items, even in early raids, is the server down for a pretty good long time. Ultimately, this is a very classic approach, and many items you got, even as your pre-raid best in slot, such as the Hand of Justice or the Savage Gladiator Chain, remained good for several tiers, and we want to carry this forward. Okay. With this in mind, however, we know you will likely want to run several different raids a week, but we want to avoid a situation where logistics gets messy because you have to contend with a large number of irregular, unwieldy raid lock timers. By the time Blackwing Lair is out, for example, there's going to be a large menu of relevant things to do at level 60. Five and being able down. to plan mm -hmm. and schedule activities on a predictable cadence is going to be very important. Last quick note on this, while Upper Black Rock Spire is technically a 10 player raid, it's never had a lockout and that will remain true. It's essentially a 10 player oh. dungeon and we'll okay. that way. So go farm. Good, good clarification. Another very frequently asked question we've received is what about weapon skill racial bonuses? From the start, we've mm, suggested that you this shouldn't is, this need to This has always been a problem with things vanilla. like orc and human weapon skills always been a problem long term, with and that you should feel good about choosing whatever race you want based on their aesthetics or other bonuses that race gets apart from weapon skill bonus. Every phase, we get asked for a status update on this, and we just wanted to confirm that yes, the solution is coming at level 60. At level 60, you will be able to discover a method to essentially swap in and out up to two weapon skill bonuses for your character. 
So, for example, if I were a Troll Fury Warrior and I had a mace and a dagger, I could swap my passive bonuses to plus five maces and plus five daggers. Please note that these weapon skill bonuses do not stack with each other or with a certain race's normal passive weapon skill bonus. So in the same scenario, if I were a human warrior, I already get plus five maces from my racial skill. So instead, I might want to use plus five bows and plus five daggers so that maybe my bow skill had a better chance to hit if I was pulling higher level mobs. Just like your racial skills, however, these passives will stack with any weapon skill you I don't, use. I don't think I understand exactly what he's Obsidian saying. Obsidian Edge Blade or Maladath Ruined Blade of the Black Flight. These unlockable passives will be available right at level 60, and while there will be a short discovery to unlock them, everyone who wants them will So have everybody gets an them. automatic plus five, Continuing but it's almost like why not just get rid of it yes, altogether? Yes, priests will also be able to unlock other races' unique priests. Like why not just rework how weapon well, skill works? Such as devouring. Maybe is this just an easier solution? We don't want to spoil how this will work just yet. But just like weapon skills, maybe it's easier on the dev side because of like the, the attack table and how things work with the attack table. Early on at level 60. There will also be discoveries tied to accessing these spells as well. So this is the last big item in our level 60 preview, and we think it's the most impactful, as items are obviously going to be yeah, the major might, focus yeah, they of might the change new level the 60. We are essentially totally revamping tier sets to add multiple variants for different specs and roles that each class can fill. We don't necessarily intend to make a full set for every single niche playstyle in every raid tier, as some classes can okay. end up with upwards of five to seven sets every few months. Okay. But we do want to try and cover a lot of the major roles as well as some new playstyles we've added to different classes so that most unique roles each class has access to get something cool at some point during their level 60 journey. Additionally, we plan to revamp many existing non-set dungeon and raid items at level 60, as well as adding new best in slot or nearly best in slot crafting options at 60. We think there's a lot of fun and interesting things we can do with the level 60 professions and profession specialization crafts, and we plan to expand on those to keep crafting more relevant for a longer period of time. Lastly, swapping profession specializations will be easier and more flexible, but will likely have a cost associated with doing so. We're still ironing out the final design for what this will look like, but if you're familiar with how this worked in Burning Crusade, that might be a good starting point to inform how this might work. Finally, here's a few quick examples of what potential new tier sets could look like. Lawbringer's Shoulders, Stamina, Intellect, Chance to get a crit with melee and range attacks and spells, uh, increases damage in my holy by up to 23. That makes no sense! <laughs> increases the holy damage bonus of your judgment increases by everything, increases the critical strike chance of your holy shot, gives a balance chance to, uh, cause, ho uh, to cause holy damage to erupt from them, dealing, wait, this is AoE? So Lawbringer being like a Shockadin type suit. These are very much not finalized, so any of the stats or set bonuses could and probably will change. So first off, you'll notice we've got a tanking rogue And trying to make Shockadin work for all of Zod, bonus. just stop. No, we've dude, also got a Shockadin, Shockadin is such like an iconic really sort of like paladin meme that I feel like they have to try to make it work. Lastly, we have a Boomkin set that really leans into some of the bonuses we've recently added to I am world. Holy Shock, I am Holy Shock. Again, these are somewhat early on rough draft versions of some of these items, but we think being able to make exciting new variations of these iconic item sets is very cool, and it's going to be a defining feature of the level 60 end game. So with that, we're done with today's presentation. Thank you for bearing with us I on do this it. one. Here's what I'm excited about, man. Along. We've had a blast on this wild season of Discovery journey with you so far, and we honestly This confirms that there's gonna to be no real seal to this playstyle, though. As well as provide a bit yeah. more information on phase four as we start getting a little bit closer to that. As always, we want to express a heartfelt thanks from the- I won the Paladin in big numbers. It doesn't confirm it, but I'm just, my hopes are completely gone for that, thank unfortunately. thank you for the participation in helping us develop this season. We'll see you again when Season of Discovery Phase 3 goes live. Like, I just like the sure. big, like- Thank you again. I, the, the big numbers, like the boom, boom, boom. That's what I want in, in my freaking classic, dude. Like, to me, classic Paladin, big numbers. Check Rhett numbers. I heard Rhett's kind of owning now, but, but like, I don't like, like, the- I don't like like the fast like play style. Here's the thing, man. I'm am I completely out on sod? No, not at all. Uh, I mean, you guys know it. I've said it. I've said it a lot. The big thing I'm looking forward to, the big thing I've been waiting for, is max level, like level 60, maybe level 50. There's a chance that I come back and put it back in the rotation. I mean, there's been a, obviously a lot of like GTA that we've been doing. I think over the course of the next couple weeks, I would expect to have some other things going on. Like I'm gonna be hosting this uh, Plunderstorm tournament in LA. So I'm gonna be flying out in a couple days and doing that. I do wanna uh, get 
on the Final Fantasy train for a little bit here. And then on top of that, we have the draft store coming. Or dra sorry, the draft show is coming. So a lot of people have been asking, hey, S-Fan, are you doing an NFL draft show this year? Again, yes. Yeah, it's going to be real good, exciting time. It's going to be fun. And uh, we'll go from there. If you guys like this video, I do all kinds of different things on my YouTube channel. Make sure to sub to the YouTube channel. Everything is SFAN TV. YouTube, Instagram, Discord, Reddit, Twitch, Twitter. Everything is SFAN TV. I've been doing a lot of GTA roleplay stuff. Uh, I started out doing a bunch of classic WoW stuff years ago. There's a lot more what to stuff coming. What is your cat's name? Wait, what's my kids? I don't have kids. I got I, the kids I have is the people watching. Oh, cats. Oh, what's up, Tark? Uh, that's Nymeria. It's not my cat, but the, it's uh, it claimed me as its uh, owner. Yeah, adoption fraud. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll see you guys next time. Oh,